What's happening, kiddos? We are here, and it is season three, and we couldn't be more excited, can we? Season three, you guys, we made it! It's, I, it's officially arrived. I mean, be honest, did you think we'd make it I didn't think we'd far? make it past the first couple episodes, Miss Carrie, but we are here, and we, I mean, honestly, I feel like this has become such a wonderful tradition. Sunday mornings, it's Sunday amazing. Sunday, Sunday. Mm-hmm, Sunday, right? Sunday. And what do you think, guys? This is, this is all new. This is this is the new Rancho Kids Studio slash Ryan and Carrie's Toy Emporium. To Using toy Emporium. Say that three times fast. Toy Emporium, Toy Emporium, Toy Emporium. Uh, let me try. Nailed it. Toy Emporium, Toy Emporium, Toy Emporium. <sighs> I think I was more betterish. So does that mean we can call it a draw on the thing that I lost that one time? We're starting oh, off episode goodness. three completely. Oh, Toy Emporium. Listen, what is new? You might be asking, well, season three, what's new and different? Well, I mean, the set is new and different, like you said. Um, my yellow cardigan. Yes. Uh, <laughs> My, my, I'm, I'm, I'm dressed the same as I always am. I feel Shorts like my hair is a little bigger. Yeah, yeah, today. yeah. my hair is, is just as shiny as ever. But, but here is what's new is the set. And, and we'll do a few new things here and there. But what's the same is the fun, the worship, the messages, the craziness, and, and all the good that, stuff that brings you guys back every week. The shout outs. Oh, wait, are we gonna do that right now? <laughs> yes, oh. I was waiting for you to pause so this I is, can get that this in. This is a big then. deal. I don't have a shout out this week because I was like, season three, episode one. There's who, a lot. Who, There's who is a worthy? There's a lot to process through that. Who is worthy of that? And the question is, okay. who did you deem worthy it's, of this shout out? It's a very, very special one. We had to think long and hard because this is a brand new chapter and we've got to like, <laughs> you know, just grab them, right? Big, big deal. Okay, I'm yeah. so excited. I'm so excited. Who's okay. It is not just a shout out to a very, very special girl. Oh, it's a girl. I've, it is I'm, a girl. I've eliminated half the audience right now. It is a shout out to a birthday girl. What? Yes. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. This, Tell me who she is. Tell me who this she is. This week, you got, Ryan, there is no one on the planet like her. Like, uh, that's true. No that's, one. They're that's like snowflakes, true. right? Yes. Like, she's like a snowflake. There's not, Wait a minute. Is not that a, two alike. Is that a hint? The snowflake? It is a Come little on. bit of a hint. Interesting. So I'm thinking somewhere north. Uh -huh. Somewhere north. Uh -huh. Or really far south. No, 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 no. Okay. Not so Antarctica. North. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so, so yes. who is it? <laughs> it is one of our Canadian friends, oh, Ryan. Oh, you know Her I love Her name Canadian. is Sarah Martin, and we are just so thrilled that you were born, Sarah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. You told me we were, you were going to warn me before you started singing in I season three. I couldn't help it because you see, Sarah's birthday deserves to be That's sang. True. Sang That's about. true. Spontaneous sang. singing, bursting out yeah. into song. I mean, it does make sense when I love it comes it. to Sarah's birthday. I think she, is she eight years old? She's eight. 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 She's eight. eight is great. I had to do the math in my head. Happy eighth birthday. This is exciting. Hey, kids, this season is going to be great just like eight is great for Sarah. It's gonna be great for us. We've got a lot of new things, but one thing that we're gonna keep doing is starting with worship. That's right. Let's go straight into worship. Nothing special. Just, I mean, worship is special, but nothing <laughs> special or fancy, right? Right, well, I mean, worship is always special. Yeah, yeah, but and I mean, no like added twist I think or anything. this week is going to be a little more fancy. I'm glad you said that, Ryan, because, um, hey, you guys, do you remember how, I mean, this is going back because this was in season two and now we're season three. three. So you have to think through um, a whole lot, sift through chapter two to the part, the episode where I won a balloon bouncing competition. Hey, look. Remember that? Look, I'm drawing an and asterisk. Do you remember, do you remember this is an asterisk. how, Ryan, shh, asterisk. Do you remember, you guys, how we had decided we had set up previously determined and agreed upon that whoever lost that would have to do whatever the other person Something out of their comfort zone. Fun. Gosh, so <laughs> that's gonna happen now? Uh, that was a little bit of an evil laugh, oh, sorry. It was just- You guys that think she's so nice, do you see how much joy she's taking in my displeasure? <laughs> do you see it? Davido sees it, I see it. I think you even feel it. So let's just go ahead and, and rip the Band-Aid off. Can we rip the Band-Aid off and do this? I think we should. All right. One, two, three. A little more enthusiasm, Roll please. Roll it, Davido. A little more enthusiasm, please. Okay, so hey, kids, I've thought it over and I've decided I'm gonna have a really good attitude about this, Miss Carrie. I am actually looking forward to it and I have some ideas, some thoughts, some choreography, choreography thoughts. Lots of like, 
head bobbing. Just kind of this. Wait, what do you think? That's not how this. No, immediately no. Immediately? No. You didn't even give it a thought. <laughs> you. This is called. I don't know if you remember the name you made up, my friend. Out of the comfort zone or something like that. It's called. Fish out of water. Oh yeah, that's, water. that's what it's called. So let's I go. get to tell you what the moves are. I have I have restrictions, health restrictions. My left knee doesn't bend very much, and my back is pretty bad. Lots of sports. Dancers wouldn't get it. Trust me. Go ahead. Now go ahead and do your thing. Okay, are you finished? Yeah. I have chosen a song, and um, it's called. You know it. Uh, this the hokey pokey. Light of oh, this my. little light of my. Uh, uh, that one. You, my friend. You don't do that. Okay, let's right, go. What ready? is it? What is it? Okay. So, can we just start some music? I don't even know. You're the teacher. I'm the student. All right, I'm gonna start some. If this was the other way around, I'd be far more prepared. Just so you know. Here we go. You gotta just kind of move. Okay, Let okay. your body just go with the beat. Do you feel it? How am I doing? What's the What's the first step? Do I just have to follow you? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Again with a spark. The spark caught fire in my heart. It's brightest when we're shining together. This little light up. I'm do ready. Feel, do you feel ready for that to be played? Your version of it with our kids at home. Like in, in the middle of it. Our team and you. It'll be like you're an extension of the team now, Ryan. I will officially be on the team. Well, I. Like I, I officially? Okay, I did. <laughs> but can, I, I think, can, I, can I think that? I feel like this could be kind of like just the next step towards. Baby steps. Yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. Okay. Hey, uh, Davido, when you. Uh, can you make sure you give me like the really good parts in there, okay? And make sure there's plenty of this. Okay. Hey. That's not in it. I'm loving. That's I'm loving it. every bit of what we just did. I can't wait to see the video. So go ahead and roll our me and me and my worship team's video. It up again with a spark. The spark.
luck, my feet are always in motion Taking me to anywhere But where you want me I try to keep things constantly moving Hoping for a faster way Than what you're doing But your love is chasing after me It's chasing after me There's no way I could ever hide Cause you keep coming was a lot of fun. That was not, it was not so bad. Kids, don't be afraid to face your fears. I mean, I, before that, I didn't know what a good dancer I was, but now it's official. I'm on the worship team, correct? Um, I don't think we have a shirt for you, so oh. I'm sorry. That, what okay. a bummer. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? Sorry, Ryan. I'll start my own competing worship team, and we'll have like little, like like in the 80s movies, they used to have these little dance-offs. Dance-off? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Ryan's worship team against Miss Carrie's worship team. It'll be like the the Jets and the I don't the sharks. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where we we'll walk up and snap like this. Can you yeah. get them? Uh, oh, both. Yes. Oh. So hey, uh, that that worship was actually really great. It's it was, I, fun, I'm right? I'm a fan of that whole thing, and I was a fan of the songs. See, that you See, this is what we're always trying to tell you, Ryan, that you can use whatever God has given to you. And I mean, He's given you some limbs there. <laughs> yes. He's given I, you some. I you have, have the ability to shake and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to shake less, kids, just to be clear, okay? In high school and college, I shook far less than I shake now. I'm just glad you didn't use the, the J word. I really appreciate you not using the J word. <laughs> J word Are you is the word jiggle. Jiggle, jiggle. I might I jiggle a bit word. here and there. Davido, I mean, is that okay for her to talk about me like that? I mean, the, you said it. You implied it. <laughs> Where do I get, make my complaints from the HR? Oh okay, goodness. listen. You know what? I'm pretty sure there's a law. I'm pretty sure there's a law in place against you talking about me shaking. Oh, Ryan. You know what? I think this is a great segue That's, into the yes, game. Yes, which is about... The law. Wacky, weird, <laughs> wild laws, kids. That's right. Hey, so. and while they're watching the game, maybe mm -hmm. you can tell me about any run-ins you've had with the law. Oh, interesting. You mm. know, I mean, I, I don't like to brag, but... I was once a bandito. Ooh. 
Yeah. All right, guys. I, I good luck with means. the game. Enjoy the game, kiddos. Hello there, kids. My name is Officer Johnson, and I have the distinct privilege of running you through today's game. Now, here's the way the game is going to work. Officer Johnson, that's me. I'm going to go ahead and tell you about a law, an actual law that really exists somewhere in this country or around the globe. And your job is to be able to sort through two possible endings to this law. I'll give you two options. You choose one. And when this game is done, Officer Johnson's going to have you guys set up to not break any laws anywhere, okay? Alrighty then, kids, let's go ahead and get right into this first one. This one's from a place in Europe called Denmark. Did you know that before you start your car in Denmark, you need to do some things? You need to check your steering, you need to check your brakes, you need to check your lights, and you need to do one other thing. The question is, what is that thing? Is that thing that you need to honk your horn or that you need to turn your radio off? Go ahead and think about it and give me your answer. All right, kiddos, how'd you do on that one? Did you go beep, beep, honk, honk, coming through? Because if so, you're correct, kiddos. All right, let's move on to the next one. Did you know that cars entering the town of Lawrence, Kansas, are required to do something, which is honk their horn? Now, there's a reason they have to do it. Is the reason, first of all, to alert children playing in the street that they're on their way, or is it to warn horses that they're on their way? Go ahead and give me your guess, kiddos. Well, kiddos, it looks like the reason you're supposed to honk that horn is to warn the horses, not the kids. Anyway, let's look at this next law. It's a doozy. In Oklahoma, you can go to jail for doing this one harmless act. Is it either making faces at dogs, making funny faces at dogs, or is it singing Christmas carols before dark or before dusk? You tell me, kiddos. What do you think? Looks like the answer to this one is making funny faces at dogs. That's completely illegal in Oklahoma. All right, let's move to Alabama, where it is not illegal to pick your nose. However, after you pick your nose, there is something you cannot do. Is it flick your booger into the wind, or is it wipe your booger on a family member? All right, kids, this one was both disgusting and difficult, but the answer was flicking your booger into the wind. You cannot do that in Alabama. You know what else you can't do in Alabama? You cannot dress up as one of these two things for Halloween in Alabama. The question is, is it illegal to dress up as a policeman or a priest in Alabama? All right, would you look at that? It looks as though you are allowed to dress up as Officer Johnson, but you are not allowed to dress up as a priest. Let's move to another ALA state. Let's go to Alaska, way up in the Northwest there. The question is, which one of these two things is illegal to throw out of a plane in Alaska? Is it a live moose or confetti? Now this one, I guess you could kind of sort of be right no matter what you guessed, because I'm pretty sure confetti would be considered littering, but the law I was referring to was throwing a live moose out of a plane. You cannot do that in Alaska. All right, let's go back to Oklahoma, a place called Bromide, Oklahoma. Did you know that it's illegal to jump off your roof doing one of these two things? Is it yelling Geronimo or having a sheet around your neck like Superman? Looks like the people in Bromide, Oklahoma are not a big fan of Superman impersonators because they do not allow you to jump off the roof with a towel around your neck like a cape. Now let's go to California. This one's about oranges. Did you know it's illegal to eat an orange in California in one of these two places? Is it in a bathtub or in an elevator that you are not allowed to eat an orange in California? Looks like Officer Johnson learned something new today because I'll tell you right now, I've eaten more than my fair share of oranges in bathtubs. So, uh, you know, uh, lock me up and throw away the key because <laughs> that's illegal in California. Next up, we're gonna go to a place I like to call Cleveland, Ohio. Did you know that you needed to have a hunting license in Cleveland, Ohio to do one of these two things? Is it catch mice or play paintball? Which one requires a hunting license in Cleveland, Ohio? Don't go trying to catch a mouse in Cleveland, Ohio without a hunting license because if you do, you're breaking the law. All right, let's move down to Gainesville, Georgia, where it is illegal to do one of these two things to fried chicken. Is it illegal to use silverware while eating it or is it illegal to put ketchup on it? You tell me, kiddos. Well, I'll be. It looks like you gotta use your hands if you wanna eat fried chicken in uh, Gainesville, Georgia. 
But I'll tell you what, let's move on up to a place in North Dakota called Grand Forks. Did you know it's illegal in Grand Forks to throw one of these two things on public property? Is it a birthday party, throwing a birthday party, or is it a snowball, throwing a snowball on public property? Go ahead and take some time, think it over, and let me know what you think. All right, it looks like you're more than welcome to throw a birthday party in a public place, but they better not catch you throwing snowballs in a public place in Grand Forks, North Dakota. All right, kiddos, why don't you finish this sentence for the next law? Did you know that in Hartford, Connecticut, dogs may not, is it dogs may not um, uh, be educated or dogs may not have their hair dyed? Which, both of those sound strange. Good luck guessing this one. The last thing the city of Hartford, Connecticut wants is smart dogs running around everywhere. So it is illegal for them to be educated in that town. That's, that's a strange law. Let's look at a place I like to call Indiana. Did you know that once in Indiana, a monkey was arrested, tried, and convicted in a court of law for doing something strange? The question is, what was he doing? Was he smoking a cigarette or uh, stealing bikes? Which one? Apparently, it's illegal for monkeys to smoke cigarettes in Indiana because this monkey got busted. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at our next one here. Did you know that in Massachusetts, it is only legal to do this when all of the windows are closed and locked? The question is, is it snoring or singing in the shower? Which one of those two things requires you to have all the windows and doors closed and locked? Looks like the answer is snoring. So uh, before you go to bed, you might wanna lock those doors and windows just to be safe. Okay, let's go across the pond to a place called Paris. Paris, France, maybe you've heard of it. Did you know that it is illegal to do one of these two things on a sidewalk in Paris, France? The question is, is it illegal to jump rope? Like, you know, jump roping, or is it illegal to spin tops? Like those little toys that kids play with. What did you guess, kiddos? Did you guess jump roping? Because if so, that's wrong. The answer is that you cannot spin tops on sidewalks in Paris, France without facing the full wrath of the law. Okay, <laughs> all right, let's move on to our final one. Did you know that in Sarasota, Florida, it is illegal to wear a swimsuit doing one of these two things? The question is, is it singing in a public place or is it working out? Good luck, kids. I hope you get the last one right. Okay, here's our answer for the final law of the week, kiddos. It is illegal in Sarasota, Florida to sing in public while wearing a swimsuit. Random. All right, kiddos, that's the end of the game, and I'm gonna tell you right now, there is no need to thank Officer Johnson because, you know, I'm just doing my job. So uh, I hope that you've learned a few things. I hope you can travel about the globe uh, safely and without risking law enforcement punishments. But I'm telling you, I'll be back because I feel like there's always new wacky laws that are being created and I want to make sure you kiddos are prepared. But for now, I've got to go. Have a great week. Do you feel safer now? I have to tell you, I am a law-abiding citizen. But... But those were bananas, you guys. The kids, oh you, my you, goodness. you never know where you're at and what you might be doing and how dangerously risky <laughs> it could be. Right? I mean, oranges in a bathtub? Have you done that? What? I mean... I mean, that's a weird thing, but... I don't think I would jump off a bridge with a cape or yelling Geronimo. Yeah, Geronimo. I mean, if I so were I was to... safe with that one. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So kids, yeah. listen, we do that for you. I mean, this is something we do for you guys because, you know, we just feel like you need to know these things, right? And we want to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love it. Miss Carrie, yes. I, I just thought about something. I literally thought this a second ago. This is a baseball. Do you, do you, do you, did you ever play any baseball as a kid I... in Canada? I have played a game or two okay. of baseball. Could you do me a favor and uh -huh. show me, how would you grip that if you were gonna throw a curve ball? Okay, okay. Um, I mean, kind of. How about, how about if you were to throw a fastball? Show me your fastball grip. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, and then last one, a change up. Show me, show me you're throwing a change up. You know what change up is? This is tricky. This yes, is tricky. This, is, this is definitely tricky. <laughs> So it's the same grip for all three with you. I feel like I want to do that, actually. Yeah. That, actually, yeah. for a changeup, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, let me, what? Okay, so change it. You just want to kind of get deep in that hand like that. Yeah, Fastball, yeah. four seam, two seam. Kids, this lesson's for free. Curveball, I usually just go here, but some See, people put a knuckle the one. in there. Curveball. Yes, yes. I was confusing it with curveball. So listen, did you feel like you learned something new there? 
Yeah. Cool. Well, sure. I'm thinking that we could do that right now with the message from the Bible. We could help okay. the kids learn something new. What do you think? I yes, <laughs> this always. Is awesome. So, so what do you think? We what, what's the, the new series gonna gonna? Oh goodness, be? there's so many options. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, I we mean, did, we could t we could do Old Testament. We could talk um, about like major we, characters in the Bible. We, we could talk about. Oh my goodness. There's like, there's we time. Do we, okay. whole we don't series. have time. We don't have time. Jesus. We don't have time for you to just keep. We have to pick one. I mean, it's not like we're timeless here. I mean, it's, there's there's time involved to what we're doing. Well, but it's really important that we take the time, right, yes. to really think through okay, it. We can't really do, yeah, well. we, we have to choose wisely. Choose the right yes. thing. So, but but what is the actual choice going to be? Because I mean, there's, there's time restraints here to what I'm we're doing. Just, oh, I don't like time restraints. Ryan. You always think everything was just timeless. Yes. I just I what? need lots of time. I think you just hit something right in my brain, kids. That's what we're gonna do. A series called Timeless, or Timeless Truths, or Timeless Tips. I haven't really decided, but the key is timeless. You're gonna love it. We're gonna look at letters from Paul that were written to people thousands of years ago, and we're gonna see how those truths and those little tips on how we can, we can live our fullest life, how they're still applicable today. <gasps> which is the definition of timeless. Boom! There you go, kids. Enjoy it. It should be some good stuff. What's happening, kids? It's me, Mr. Ryan, and today we are starting a brand new teaching series. It is called Timeless Truths. Please, Davido, add that sound effect in there later, okay? Because it's a pretty important title. Let's try it again, ready? Timeless Truths. If it's not in there, it's gonna be really weird. But here's the deal, kiddos. I was thinking, what should we go through next? We've gone through, you know, Well Played Jesus, we went through some amazing things during VBS, and then we did a series through Romans. And as I was going through Romans, I just kept thinking about the fact that these truths that Paul wrote to the church in Rome, they were written 2,000 years ago, but man, they are still incredibly relevant for us today, 2,000 years later, which makes them timeless truths. If this sound effect does not work, I'm gonna look really, really silly. Anyway, here's the deal. Today, we are gonna be looking at a letter that Paul wrote shortly, either before or after the letter he wrote to the Romans, and this one he wrote to a group of people called the Galatians. And we're gonna be looking at Galatians chapter three, verses one through three. But before we get there, I wanna show you my prop for the day, which is not Mr. Pumpkin, he's just my buddy. He's my comfort animal, okay? He's there when I need him. Thank you for being there for me. Anyway, this is my prop. It is an umbrella, which I'm gonna try to open without breaking a TV or a microphone. Oh, there it is. This is my prop. It's wonderful. It's an umbrella. And every time I think of Galatians chapter three, verses one through three, I think of an umbrella. Why do I think of an umbrella? That's a great question. Well, here's the deal. As we talked about over and over throughout the book of Romans, one of the messages that Jesus, as well as Paul, made incredibly clear to the people was that we need to trust and depend upon God's grace, not our own righteousness, when it comes to being saved. It is only by God's unmerited favor, favor that we cannot and do not deserve, that we are saved, which is kind of like this umbrella. It's this idea that I just, I'm trusting in this umbrella to save me from the rain. I'm trusting in God's grace to save me from judgment. I'm trusting in God's grace to get me forgiveness because it's just the only hope I have. So here's the idea. When it comes to Christianity, if this umbrella represents grace, it is wonderful to just be able to rest and know that I'm covered by God's grace. That is incredibly important. This is how we are saved, by God's grace. Now, what does this have to do with Galatians chapter three, verses one through three? Let me read it to you whilst remaining under my umbrella. Whilst is what I say when I'm trying to sound fancy, kids. You should try mixing that in every once in a while. Your teachers will be super impressed whilst you're at school. Anyway, here's the deal. Ch uh, Galatians chapter three, verses one through three, it says, oh, Foolish Galatians, whoa, that is a very interesting start to this thing. He's basically saying, 
Come on, Galatians, you can't be this foolish, this silly. He says, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. In other words, didn't we talk about just how incredibly clear and important Jesus' death on the cross was and what it meant for us? That it was because he died on the cross that we have hope because we can trust in the fact that his death paid the price for our sins, which is the beauty of this grace that we're resting underneath. He's like, we've talked about this, don't you remember? But he's like, who cast a spell on you? Who made you forget this? He says in verse two, he says, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Which basically his way of saying is, did you get saved? Because when we're saved, we get the Holy Spirit. He says, did you get the Holy Spirit by doing things to earn God's love and righteousness and his Holy Spirit? Were you saved by doing the right things? No, we can never be saved by our own actions. We can only be saved by trusting in God's grace, by just resting and saying, I'm covered by the grace of God. So he says, uh, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about grace. You received the Spirit because you trusted in God's incredible grace that we get through Jesus Christ. So let's look at what he says after that. He says, how foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the Spirit? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? I wanna stop there because that is a timeless truth. Kids, I don't know why it is. I don't know what it is within us, but there's something within us that feels so strongly that we need to do things to earn God's love, to earn God's approval. And, and remember, we've talked about this before. Grace is not easy to accept, but if we wanna become uh, followers of Christ, if we wanna be seen as righteous in God's sight, we have to depend on God's grace. But what Paul is saying, he's saying someone Somebody must have come along and told you, sure, it's about trusting in God's grace to get saved. But once you're saved, well, you better put that umbrella away and you better start earning God's love. You better start earning God's approval. And what Paul is saying is saying, no way, Jose. That is absolutely not the truth. You don't start with grace and then put it away once we become saved so we can now begin to try and earn God's love. No, 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 we start with grace and we rest and trust in it from the beginning of our relationship with God until the day that we die. We are always resting and trusting in God's grace. We are always resting and trusting in the fact that our works do not earn his love and approval. Now, can we do things? To, to honor God? Can we do things because God invites us to a much better life? Can we do things like, like you know, sharing the, the love of Christ with others and, and obeying our parents and doing all these things that the Bible calls us to do? Absolutely we can do them. But we don't do them with the, with the umbrella down saying, okay, God, I, I think I've got it from here. I think I can take it. I don't need your grace anymore. No, 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 no. We stay here. We stay under God's grace. And we say, God, I am gonna try each and every day to live a life that honors you. I'm gonna try each and every day to, to, to obey your word because I believe you invite me to such a full and abundant life. I'm gonna try the best I can to obey you and honor you, God, but <laughs> I'm not even, not even gonna think about letting go of this umbrella. See, that's what happened in Galatians. In Galatians, the whole book seems to focus on this idea that people began to tell Christians, yes, you're saved by grace, but after that, you better start working to maintain or keep God's love. And Paul spent so much time in the book of Galatians saying, no, don't be so foolish. It starts with grace, it continues with grace, and it ends with grace. Our only hope when it comes to God is this incredibly wonderful thing called grace. That's all I got. It's a timeless truth, and I hope you guys can learn it. I hope you guys can appreciate it. And I hope you guys will never fall for what these Galatians fell for and listen to people that say, no, 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 you need to work to earn God's love because you just don't. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And I hope you guys can get it through your skulls a lot quicker than I got it through my skull. I said skull weird the first time. Let me go work on pronouncing skull. I'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Skull, 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 skull. So there it was, kids. That was our timeless truth of the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Miss Carrie, what? 
did you, th I was asking you what did you think, but what do you have there? What is that? It's from our Tori, Toy Emporium. Tori, Tori Emporium. Tori Emporium. <laughs> toy Emporium, Toy Emporium, Toy Emporium. Try it again. Toy Emporium. It's from our Toy Emporium. There we go. There we go. Not bad. Yeah. That is Baymax from uh, Big Hero 7. Six. That's the sequel. And um, we got this from a trip to Disneyland with our friend David Matsumoto. You said we. I did, I've never been to Disneyland with you and David Matsumoto. That's true. Who, who, my, who, daughter, who? my daughter and I. Oh! Got this. On our trip to Disneyland with David Matsumoto. I love him? that. You know that that, as far as a drinking vessel is concerned, is far better. What if you bought like a, I don't know, like a Jack Skellington one? It would be a very small drink. You totally so, missed. You totally missed my my prompt. There. Which was what? I got this with my daughter when I went to Disneyland with David Matsumoto. Okay, yeah. Okay, so so David Matsumoto. Do you yeah. guys? David Matsumoto is the best. He, he is, is one of our children's best. volunteers. One of the nicest. <laughs> smartest, most talented people. And he's a snappy dresser. He's got one of those bow ties. Mm -hmm. Kids, you a little bow tie. Mm -hmm. That's how, if I had a, if I a bow tie, talk like this. How would you talk if you wore a bow tie? Mm. Just the same? Yeah. Yeah, well that, that's, you're missing opportunities there. You've okay. got to seize every opportunity to use a weird voice. Add that to the message as a timeless truth. Seize every opportunity you have to use a weird voice, okay? So David Matsumoto got that for your daughter. Yes. And guess what? David Matsumoto is very relevant right now. You should have set me up with this earlier because he is the one who is going to help us with our next segment. If you remember, it's called Drawing with David. See, I seized another opportunity for a weird voice. Is Walter coming Walter? back? No, that was, that was Walter maybe. <laughs> I mean, this is Walter's uncle. His name's Stephen. So. I can't wait. David is a phenomenal drawer. Drawer. Drawing. And he's going to take us on a Disney drawing adventure right now. I love it. My name is David, and I do drawings. Hey, everybody. My name is David. I'm really excited to be with you here today to draw someone who loves warm hugs, loves summer, and it still feels like summer. It's Olaf the Snowman. Now kids, I would love for you to draw with me. So if you want to pause this, go grab some supplies, draw along with me, and you don't need an eraser because you're not going to need one. So first things first, you got to draw a big circle as a sketch. So I'm going to draw a big circle with lots of lines. Now you're going to notice that, wait a minute, he's using orange. Why orange? Well, we're going to sketch it out with a lighter color and then go over it with black to lock in those lines. Now that I have my giant big snowball of a, of a head, I'm gonna draw my guideline. My guideline is kind of straight all the way down to curve it. Curve just like that. And we'll make it big and large because Olaf's head is big and large. Now, because he's always looking in a certain direction, I need to make him see that way. So I'll draw my guideline for his eyes. Now, we're gonna measure just a little bit. Take your hand. Say, okay, how big is this space? Double it underneath. Draw a line right there. That's gonna be his chin. So now that I have his chin, I have his head, time to give him some actual shape to his big chubby cheeks. As you notice, Olaf loves to smile. So I'm gonna draw a big giant chubby cheek on the right and bring it all the way down and connect it to that bottom. That big giant cheek. And because he's looking off on the side, I'm gonna make sure that his other side is a little bit less chubby. And make it come down to the side. So you can kind of sort of see it coming together. But now, we have to make sure that Olaf has a forehead. So I'm gonna draw a line that goes up, really high, high in the sky, make it level off, and then chop down. And that's gonna be his forehead. Now that I've looked at his outside shape, I like these lines a lot. I'm gonna lock it in with some black. All right, now I've locked in some lines. You might notice I'm drawing on a whiteboard. You may not have the ability to race, and that's okay, because we're gonna make mistakes. That's all, a part, that's all a part of sketching our characters. And now I've gotta draw his actual face, because Olaf has tons of expression. So I'm gonna start off by drawing his mouth. So with his mouth, I need a big smile, grin, dimple, and one that's slightly less higher. Now draw your line of the corner of his mouth, edge it off and go across. You want a really straight line for this, and then curve it 
up to his other corner of his smile. Now I'm gonna draw that big giant tooth that he has. So we're gonna draw a line that goes down like a rectangle on either side and connect it. And that's Olaf's tooth. Now we're gonna make his big giant grin. And I'm gonna pull a line down from the left go all the way down to the bottom and meet it from the right side and curve it inwards. And if you like that smile, awesome and lock it in. But I wanna make this a little more curved. So I'm gonna sketch a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna make this corner a little bit less of here as well. All right, let's lock those in. Now, I've got his face, I've got his mouth done. I gotta make sure that Olaf can see where he's going. So I'm gonna draw some big ovals, or maybe kind of circles. The one next to it has to be more ovalish because he's looking off on the side. We gotta give him perspective. That's a big word that says things look different where you look. So I also have to give him some pupils, the little dark sub part of your eyes. And because Olaf needs a ton of expression with his eyebrows, I'm gonna draw a big bushy eyebrow that curves downwards, a line in the middle to show that his forehead creases in the middle, and then one that's slightly less thick that goes off on the side. Let's lock those in. Now I saved the fun part because we gotta shade in everything. Make sure you shade in his eyebrows because Olaf has big, giant, bushy eyebrows. And make sure you darken his pupils. Make it the darkest part of your page to show real expression. We're almost there. In fact, I could say we're pretty much done. Is there anything that he's missing? What do you think, Ryan? Do you think there's anything he's missing? Yes. What's he missing? The carrot! That's right, the carrot, the thing that Sven loves to always go after. It's that carrot because he's like a little unicorn nose. So I'm gonna draw a triangular shape, kind of a curved triangle. It goes down to the point, and that's gonna be the outline of the shape of his carrot. He also has a little bit of a hook here because carrots aren't, don't grow perfectly. They always have a little weird like nub or curviness to them. And let's lock those in. And then to give the carrot some realness to it, I'm gonna draw some curved lines to show that it really is a carrot. And you can see that's really curvy. We're almost done. A couple little details and we're good to go. So I'm gonna draw some hair. Three strands and that's it. Because Olaf, he has those little pieces of wood that stick out as his hair. And then I'm gonna draw a curve on the left, a curve on the right, and a giant oval for one of his buttons. And there you have it. There is everyone's favorite snowman. Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm loving this, kids. This. <laughs> David, you are a good teacher. Check it out! Miss Carrie, eat your heart out. Wait, who is that? What is that? It's Olaf. And you can, kids, tell me you cannot see the really? Olafness. Look at him. Okay. In summer! Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah he's got the little thing. Yeah. That's, yeah, I can Listen, see Listen, it is really fun to criticize someone else's work. Let's see how you did, okay? I mean, it's not Let's, my it's not my best work, but we I mean we didn't have you know we didn't have endless time. Show us time what here, it is, so. and kids, don't don't hate on her because she's a little bit inferior. I'm a, I'm a little rusty, but I mean, it's okay, right? Can you tell it's him? Are you kidding me? Can you tell? It's him. I mean, maybe I could have I could have done a little more with the shadowing, probably. But anyway, I'll that, I'll fix it when I get home. I hate to say this, but that's really really good. Really? Yeah. It, it might be, it's... Kids, comment below. Which one do you think is more betterish? I mean, that's not exactly uh, what David did, but I kind of made it gosh, my own. Gosh, I know, you, know you never I mean? made it my own. You know what? I'm getting tired of losing to you at things, especially things where there might be a little bit of foul play involved, like the bad counting by Davido and the fact that this looks slightly printed. <laughs> did you, did... 
I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, whatever. Listen, I am not the best drawer. That's not something I'm good at, but you know what I am good at? What? Playing games and doing silly things with my kids. I'm good at that. You are really good at that. And this is season three. Yeah. And ah. I just feel like, I feel like it needs a little more in this episode. We've had a blast, don't get me wrong, it. but I feel, no, 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 I feel like we just, we need a little more. We'll so squeeze we, more into this episode. What can, what can you do for us? Listen, I don't even know. This is, this, you haven't, I mean, I, okay, listen. All I can do is promise to go home, do something fun with my kids and film it. Yes. Does that work? Yes. Cool, okay, well in that case, this is gonna be easy. Kids, I hope you enjoy. And uh, Miss Carrie, uh, I feel like you need to do some soul searching about what happened with that Olaf drawing. I am ashamed. He admitted it. <laughs> this is our version of wall ball. Those two guys stand on that wall and try and get this ball that I throw up between them. If they catch it in the air, that's great. If they don't catch it, you gotta swim and try to get it. Let's see who gets to three first. So it wasn't a don't get last, it wasn't a do get first, it was just us having fun in the backyard. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Back to you, Miss Carrie and me. Oh my goodness, what do we have all this candy for, Miss Carrie? I don't really know, they just kinda oh. handed us these bags and walked away and I feel like it's just our pride. I had this dream as a kid that somebody would walk up to me with a giant bag of candy just like this and say, for you, sir. Right? And that just happened. Happens. But Sandy just walked through, threw our bags of candy, and, and I think we're supposed to figure out a clue. We've made it. We've made, oh, really? I think I, there's got to be a reason. 
Mm. There's got to be a reason. Reason. What rhyme, What rhymes with reason? Um, season. Season. What season are we in right now? Let's see oh. here. Oh. Candy season. What is the season of candy? Season have fall? Yes, yes, that's what we're in now. But the season, when, when I think of candy and a season, I think of Halloween. Season three. Oh. No, no Halloween. Oh. Okay. Okay, listen, Halloween is right around the corner. Yes. I'm assuming yes. the reason we have this is yes. because of Rancho Kids, Rancho Churches, Halloween October extravaganza. I think it's just an October extravaganza. extravaganza. It's still happening. Oh, it's happening. It's happening, kids. That's you right. were scared. You were worried. You're thinking, is it going to happen? I don't know if it's going to happen. But it's happening, I promise you. That's, you I think that's probably exactly why yes. we have this. So the night of Halloween from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, yes. we're doing a drive-through. A little drive-through October extravaganza where you drive through and we just throw candy right through your windows. Miss Carrie will throw the candy like this. It could it could be one of these from yes. this exact bag. Yes, it could be one of these from this exact bag as well. I will be distributing these ones. You'll be distributing those ones. Awesome. And we can at Perfect. least get like, like 12 cars with this. And is it like... Is it throw one, eat two? Probably, probably. That's a good okay. ratio okay. For, for you. I'll probably go eat three to okay. every one I throw. But okay. hey, we announced it. We're gonna go ahead and hope that's the right thing. Yes. Kids, October 31st here on campus, drive through be there. I'm so excited. And, and costumes, right? They oh, can wear costumes sure, sure, and we'll be dressed sure. up and yeah, yeah. For sure, it's gonna be great. So, so that's it. That's all we got for today. We made it through the first episode of season three. And can I just say, Yes. I did notice that we made it through without any dad jokes. Oh, come. I Wait. feel like we've turned over a new leaf Hold in on. this fall I season like, three. I don't think kid, I don't think kids want to go through an episode without a dad joke, so. What? No. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. <laughs> you misjudged I've what the kids one. want. I've got one. Hey, hey, listen, Miss Carrie, this candy sure is great, but one of them, ugh, yuck. You know which one's the worst, right? The gummy bears gummy because the, the, the gummy bears because they're horrible. These things are horrible. They're the worst. <laughs> Don't eat those. Those are horrible. What do you you're think? You're so full of nerds. Yeah, it's not easy, is it? And it's not easy. That's why they're called you're, dad jokes. That's why they're you always called. try to twix me. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> all right, all right. There you go. She's on her game this season, kids. We'll see you next week with episode two of season three. And one like thing we have to do is confused. leave. Wait, two, wait, three. Episode three. Yeah, kids, that's it. That's all we got. Miss Carrie, air five. See you next time, guys. <laughs> <laughs>